What's up everyone? It's been a while since I've installed my Yunli Sineway controllers along with the DS20 uh, display made by Yunli to be used with those controllers. So it's a complete setup from Yunli. And uh, I gotta say, I'm very impressed with it. Very good performance. There's some really cool features on the DS20. I finally had a chance the other day to actually play around with the settings, the P settings on the DS20 throttle. Um, try them out, see what they did, see if they worked or not. Some of them really don't do anything. Before getting to the throttle settings, uh, I've heard from several people that they did not get the manual or the little booklet with the DS20 throttle when they ordered it. So I figured I'll just show that here real quick. Um, if you need to, you can pause the screen, take screenshots. DS20 uh, throttle from Ordu Speed. Ordu Speed is the the secondary name that, for Yunli. It's the it's the Yunli factory store on. Uh, Aliex, uh, AliExpress, um, they go by Ordu Speed, so that's what the, where the Ordu Speed thing comes from. Okay, the next page is the home page, just shows you uh, the display. Uh, here's the third page, button function. I realize this, this writing is very uh, light, so hopefully you can uh, catch that. Next page is the P menu settings, which is really kind of irrelevant because once you go into the P settings on the display, it shows you all this information right on the display so you don't have to reference you know, the manual. And then lastly, error code list. Looking at the display, we have three buttons. Top one is your power button. Long press it to turn power on. Just press and hold it till the power comes on. Same to shut it off. Press and hold it till it goes off. When you press these buttons, you can feel a little click. You can actually hear it a little bit too. So you can feel like the button pushing under there, but one time this wasn't working. I couldn't turn it on or off um, and I couldn't feel the little push button underneath it activating. And basically what it was is they, they have these rubber membranes over the top to keep water out, you know, make them waterproof. Um, but the, the rubber membrane had gotten like caught down inside there so I couldn't actually activate the button. Um, I just took my fingernail like this and moved it around a little bit and it popped out. And it's never happened again, but just be, be aware of that. If one of these buttons stops working, uh, double check the rubber membrane, just move it around a little bit. So with the display back on, now the power button becomes a selection button for the bottom left corner here. Currently it's on odometer. If I push the power button one time, it goes to brightness. If I push it again, temperature. If I push it again, trip meter and then it rolls back around to odometer. If we push the power button again, now it goes to brightness. Uh, this is a way you can adjust the brightness of the screen right from the main screen without going to P settings. Um, and so to do that, again, you, you keep pushing the power button one at a time, short press, until you get to brightness. And then your middle button here with the plus on it is going to adjust that. Now it's up to four, now it's up to five, so you can see it's getting brighter, then it rolls back down to one where it's the dimmest. Um, I currently, I, I usually just leave my set to five so I can help see it in the daytime. Um, so now that I have that set, if I hit the button again, it goes to temperature. I don't know what those numbers would mean. It's certainly, you know, it's maybe 65 degrees here today. And so uh, that's really just not accurate. Trip meter, um, not sure if that works or not. Again, I haven't really tried it. Okay, so that's the function of the top button, the power button. Long hold it to turn it on and off. Short press it when it's turned on to uh, manipulate the screens down here. This next button, the middle button, um, is going to have a couple of different functions. First of all, if you're on the brightness setting down in the corner there, then this middle button with the plus on it is going to adjust your screen brightness. So once you get to where you want it, go to any other setting. So there's temperature, there's trip, there's ODO, any of those. And now the middle button becomes your gear, your gear button. So I have my um, gear one, gear two, gear three. But if I go to brightness, it no longer adjusts my, my uh, gear. It only adjusts the brightness of the display. So keep that in mind. Uh, that confused me a little bit at first because uh, I just I had, would have it set for brightness and couldn't figure out how do I switch my gears. Um, so it took me a minute to, to figure out what was going on there. This button will also have other functions once we get into the P menus. The last button here on the bottom from the home page display like this has one function and that's to switch between comfort mode and sport mode. I'll get to more of that later. But let's just go around the display real quick. Again, top right corner is your gear number. 
Uh, it can be for one, two, or three, gear one, two, or three. Um, under that is the speed, and that could be terribly accurate. Use a GPS app on your phone if you want to know exactly how fast you're going. Voltage underneath it, that's really nice to have. When you're riding, this voltage isn't going to be accurate. It's going to be jumping all over the place. It's going to be lower. So um, when the scooter's not moving, that's when you can read your proper voltage on the battery. Uh, over here, we went over that, our ODO, trip meter, etc. Okay, up in the top left corner, we have our comfort mode or sport mode display. You can also see when I go to sport mode, the gear numbers turn red. In comfort mode, they're green. So like if I were in sport mode and kind of forgot about it, without actually having to go and read this word, just the color red on my uh, gear number tells me I'm in sport mode. About that, we have this ready. Uh, according to the booklet, that's a error code. So I think if it, everything's okay, there's no errors, it just says ready. And I'm guessing if there is an error code, the ready will turn into uh, whatever the error code is. This shows the ready is error code. It also shows a little triangle with exclamation mark that would be an error that would pop up next to uh, the ready if there were an error. So that would be another indication. Um, there's an indication in the middle there for cruise control. I don't have an enable on mine, therefore it, it's not showing me that. Um, and then next to that, the brake indication, that simply means when you pull your brake handle, that indication should light up, meaning it's your brake sense is working properly. And I think that's about it for indications. Oh, there's a uh, throttle signal level, which is the upper right hand corner. So if I throttle it here, you can see that green line in the upper top there going up as I throttle up. Um, with no weight on the scooter, you know, I've got the wheels off the ground, obviously, so there's no load. It's, it's uh, not going to be accurate, the throttle thing. When you're riding it, uh, that may be a little bit more helpful. Um, actually, to me, I don't really care about that. And then lastly, there's a red line that goes across the bottom there. See the red line lighting up. That is supposed to be a current level meter, basically. That's kind of nice to have, too. Uh, again, I don't know how accurate that's going to be, but you, you could think of that as like almost a tachometer on a engine. When the, the more current you're pulling, the higher that line goes. I'm guessing that's the thought behind it. I think maybe it's more accurate when you're actually pulling a lot of current as opposed to when you're not. To get into the P settings menu, uh, you have to hold the power button and the second button with the plus on it. Hold them down at the same time. And display switches over to this. And this is really nice. I like the way they've done this. So we're starting at P01, and they actually show us right there what is it. It's screen brightness. One is the lowest, five is the highest. Um, currently it's set to three. There's obviously two different ways you can adjust your screen brightness. You can do it from the front panel like we already did, or you could just set it here in the P menus. So I'm in the P menus. It's currently showing me it's set for three. If I want to change that, I can hit the middle button, which is the plus button, or this lower button, and it'll move it one way or the other. So we hit the plus button in the middle, it goes higher. I hit the lower button, it goes lower. So you just adjust it to wherever you want it. I'm going to put it at five for now and leave it there. Now you don't need to lock it in right now. You lock it in when you're all done setting your, your parameters. Um, so unlike other, other displays and such, you, you change the P setting, you then have to lock it in and then go to the next one, change it, lock it in. This one, you just make all your changes and then lock them all in at the same time at the end. So if you were done making changes at this point, let's say you just went in to make uh, a change to one of the settings and you want to lock it in, the way to do that is our button, second button, hold them both down at the same time, just like you do to get into the P menus. The menu flashes, goes back to the main screen, and then you've locked in the settings. So after you're done locking in your settings, it's a good idea to cycle power on the display. So I'm going to turn it off and then back on. And the reason why I say that is because uh, I noticed when setting the brightness in the P settings, so I currently have it set to 5, the brightest, I'm going to change it to 1, which should be the dimmest. I'm going to lock it in. goes back to the main menu. Now you see on the main menu here, my brightness is still at five. So I'm going through the different various menus there on the bottom left, and my brightness is at five. So staying at five, I set it to one. Uh, even though I locked it in, it's staying at five. But uh, once I cycle power, now you can see 
it's dimmer and it's set to one. So the brightness didn't change until I cycled power. I'm not sure if the other settings act the same way, but that's why I say it's a good idea once you lock in your new settings in the P menus, cycle power and display just to be safe. Another thing I noticed about this brightness menu is uh, when you adjust it from the front panel like this by having that set to brightness and uh, then hitting the middle button to set to, there's two, three, four, five, so there's the brightest it goes. Once I cycle power, it defaults to what the P setting is. So now we can see it's back to one for the brightness. So when you set it from the front panel, it's only going to adjust it temporarily until you turn the uh, display off. Once you turn it back on, it'll default to the P setting value. So right now I have it set to five. I'm gonna leave it there. To move on to P02, you click your power button one time. Okay, now on P02, I have mine set for miles. You can change it to kilometers, again, by using either of these buttons here. Put it where you want it. I want mine on miles. I'm going to leave it there. Push the power button again to get to P03. Your voltage, uh, this is a 60-volt battery in the scooter, so I have it set to 60 volts. P04, sleep mode timer in minutes. So I have mine set for 5, meaning if I don't touch this display and the scooter is not being used, after 5 minutes, it's going to shut the display off. Same thing here, you use these two buttons to adjust this, six, seven, however high you want it. These are minutes, by the way. You can set it up to an hour if you want it. Uh, I'm leaving mine set at five minutes. Moving on, P05, empty. There's no use for this one, nothing to do there. Again, moving on, P06, wheel diameter, 11 inches. This is 11 inch uh, wheels on this scooter. And so I have it set to 11 inches. P07, Motor poles, I have a set for 30. That's just what it happened to be set for uh, originally on the scooter with the other controllers. This as well uh, as the tire diameter size, wheel diameter size, which I had set to 11, simply does nothing more than goes into play calculating your speed and mileage. So those two numbers, same with this one, it's set for 30. Let's say I'm, I'm going 30 miles per hour on my GPS. This speedometer says 30, it's accurate. Uh, if I change this to 25 and uh, then did the same test, I would see that the displayed speed on here would now be different compared to the GPS. So it's just a way to try to adjust your speedometer to, to be as accurate as possible. Again, I just don't even care about any of that because I use a GPS app on my phone for my speedometer and mileage if I care. P08, speed limit. Um, okay, this actually does limit the speed of the scooter. I have mine set to zero. Zero means no limit whatsoever. Uh, you can adjust it up to 40. It's kind of odd the numbers they use, but 40 would be the most uh, you can take off the top end. So for example, when it's set to zero, let's say in gear two, I'm topping out at 40 miles per hour. If I then change it to 40 and redo the same test, I'm probably only going to top out around 25. Me, I want to be able to have full speed available so I can go as fast as the scooter will go. Uh, so I'm going to leave mine set at zero, which basically disables the limiter. You could set that to anywhere in between. You don't have to set to 40. 40 would, let's say 40 takes 20 miles per hour off of it. Uh, maybe 35 only takes, you know, 15 miles per hour off of it, et cetera, et cetera. So you just need to find the spot where you're comfortable with. Um, again, for me, I want to be able to go as fast as this thing can go, so I'm going to leave it at zero, meaning it's not uh, limiting the speed at all. Okay, next one. P09 is your non-zero start, push to go. So that's kind of self-explanatory. Do you want to uh, have to push the scooter before the throttle will enable, or do you want to be able to just hit the throttle and it goes? So for example, mine is set for disabled. If I hit my throttle, the scooter's not moving, I hit my throttle, motor goes. So I have that function disabled. If I were to enable it, then I would, uh, the throttle would not trigger the tire until the tire is actually moving a certain speed. Um, Kickstart, basically, that's what that is. Okay, next one, P10, drive mode. There's nothing to change here. I don't think this, uh, obviously, there's no control over this, so I don't even think it's a function. P11, pedal assist sensitivity. This would only be for an e-bike, so it's not used here on the scooter. P12, your e-brake strength. This one I'm a little bit disappointed in. Um, I've, I've experimented a lot with it, setting it from zero to five, 
and I can't tell a difference between the zero setting and the five setting. Um, however, the brakes do work really good on the scooter, the hydraulic brakes, and they, they work really well. Um, but it would be nice to have some motor braking. I have motor braking on my other scooter over there, the black one, and uh, I have it set to the max mode, and it, it really has good motor braking. It's, I, I don't believe I'm hardly even using my brake pads when I'm stopping on that thing. Again, unfortunately, I don't think it works on this one, at least mine. Now, the one I got was a preliminary one before it was released. It was kind of called, they call it like an open test version. So maybe it just doesn't have all the functions yet, and maybe the ones they're selling now that are released. Uh, this would work on but for me it didn't I've set to zero I set to five the braking all seems the same to me and like on my other one there like I said there's a clear difference between disabled low and high settings and it's it's a major difference so I don't really think this is working anyway I'm gonna leave mine set at five just in case it is doing something even just a little bit uh, then I would want it to be as strong as possible okay moving on p13 it's, uh, it says empty, there's nothing you can do there. P14, same. P15, the same. P16 is your odometer reset. Uh, I'm not interested in that. I don't really even know how to, what you could do there because there's nothing that you can change with these buttons there. So I don't know if you can really reset that or not. Uh, P17 is your cruise control. I have it disabled. Um, you can enable it. And basically what that means is if you're cruising at a certain speed, a certain throttle speed, and the scooter maintains that speed for like four seconds, it will automatically take control of your throttle so you don't have to hold the throttle anymore. P18 is next. And this says speed calibration. Uh, it can be set anywhere from 50 to 150, so 100 is right in the middle. However, it has absolutely no effect. Um, based on the terminology there, speed calibration, I figured it was a way to uh, kind of calibrate what the speedometer is showing compared to GPS to try and make it more accurate uh, to what GPS would say. However, uh, trying both ends at 50 and up to 150, uh, it made no difference in the displayed speed or the speed of the scooter itself. So it's doing absolutely nothing. Next is P19 and there's nothing there that's empty unused. P20 also unused. And now we get into some specialty settings and just right off the bat, T01 says cuff, comfort slope so it'd be a, a I believe it was supposed to be for a throttle curve for the comfort mode doesn't work doesn't do anything I set it from minus 45 up to uh, the top end which is plus 45 so there's a range of minus 45 to plus 45 basically says the more negative the more smoother the acceleration will be the more positive the more aggressive the acceleration will be um, so I should have seen a big difference from minus 45% to plus 45%. No difference whatsoever, so it doesn't really work. Not a big deal. I'll tell you why in a second here. Um, so that's T01, comfort slope. T03 will be the sport mode setting. Same thing, same setting, minus 45 to plus 45. Makes no difference. Uh, doesn't affect the sport mode whatsoever. So T01 and T03 uh, have no effect. So that leaves us with just the last setting, T02, and this is a, a fantastic setting. This does allow you to set a difference between the comfort mode and the sport mode. So here's how you set that. When I first looked at this, this was set to 100. Uh, I never really paid attention to it because the scooter was super fast and uh, that's what I wanted anyway. With it set to 100, that's basically uh, saying your comfort mode is the same as your sport mode. That's, that's all that's doing. Um, as you slet, set it lower and it goes down to 40 so 40 would be the lowest you could go uh, but as you go lower it starts taking some of that aggressiveness or some of that torque out of your acceleration uh, so anyway with this set down all the way to 40 which is the near the bottom end it goes back to 100 after that so I then set it to 40 to see what the difference would be and it smoothed out the acceleration so much in comfort mode um, I can now run dual motors even from a standing stop so again, this is uh, selectable between 40 and 100. 100 being full uh, throttle curve, which would be the same as sport mode. Sport mode always gives you the full throttle curve. Um, so the comfort mode is the one you tune. Um, 40 would be the, the lowest amount of throttle curve, which will make it nice and smooth. I actually uh, tried that a few times and like it, uh, but I'm gonna actually bump mine up a little bit to, I'm gonna try it around 50. I think that'll be good. But uh, you can experiment with that, which is what I'm going to do to find out where I really want to put that. 
So now at this point, I've locked in my comfort setting at 50. So in comfort mode, I'm going to have that smoother throttle curve uh, based on that setting. And then if I want to go back to full throttle curve, I just push this button on the bottom. Goes in sport mode. My gear numbers are now red, so I know I'm in sport mode, and I'll have the full 100% throttle curve um, in sport mode. Then uh, I want to go back to comfort mode again. Push the button back in comfort mode. Nice smooth acceleration. All right, guys, that's it for all the P settings. I just want to show you one more thing real quick here. If you happen to push the power button, top button, and the bottom button instead of the middle one, top and the middle is for the P settings to enter into and lock the P settings. Top and bottom takes you into a monitor menu, which uh, pretty cool looking. That's about all it is. There's nothing you can do in here. Um, I tried to see if I could adjust anything, but there's there's nothing to adjust there. It's basically just a monitor, like it says up in the corner there, um, and it looks like it's supposed to be monitoring the VMS voltage on the battery and such. Um, I think on the uh, official released version of this, you can actually interface this to a computer. Um, I don't know what you would do in there, but maybe that'd be pretty cool if you could like make changes to the RPMs and, and so forth for the motors. Um, but at this point, there's there's nothing to do with that. It's just a monitor. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Till next time, take care. Peace. Ride safe.